Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, continue talking about oscillations. In this particular case, we will talk about forced oscillations. Well, forced oscillation, everybody knows about, for instance, the swing when we are trying to just push it at certain frequency uh, and then it basically kind of goes back and forth and we can maintain this particular back and forth movement on the swings um, and that's basically an example of uh, forced uh, oscillation. Now in our case we will um, more concentrate on, on the spring basically object on a spring. Uh, that's how it was for the previous lectures when we were considering just uh, free oscillation and then oscillation related to um, fric uh, friction or uh, viscosity of the environment. So now it's the external force uh, which acts on the object which forces the oscillation. Okay. Now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on Unisor.com. There is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens. Um, mass is very important. Now all of these lectures, for instance, about oscillations are like three quarters mass and only one quarter is some kind of a scientific development, whatever it is. Uh, so the site is completely free. There are no advertisements. You don't even have to sign on unless you want to. Um, okay, so let's just go. Oh yes, one more thing. If you found this lecture somewhere on, let's say, YouTube or somewhere else, well, you have to understand this is part of the course, and the course is presented on unisor.com. All the lectures, yes, they are stored at uh, YouTube, for instance, um, but uh, if you use the unisor.com, you will have a complete menu of the course. So you can just sequentially go from one lecture to another um, because all the lectures are interrelated. Like, for instance, all these oscillation-related lectures, they're all about the same differential equations. Speaking about differential equations, just one more reminder that math is necessary absolutely for any kind of a physics course. In this particular case, I will definitely use differential equations, which are explained in the Math for Teens course, which is prerequisite for this one. Okay, let's go ahead. So we're talking about a spring with some kind of an object of mass m, and the spring has elasticity k, uh, k and uh, uh, what we will be talking about is about certain external force, F, which is applied to uh, this particular object. Now, um, first of all, let's just remind you what exactly happens if there is no external force. Well, if there is no external force, uh, there is only one force, which is um, which is acting Hooke's law when the force is proportional to displacement. So if this is the neutral position and then object goes this way, this is my x of t. So when object goes back and forth, X, is, uh, X of t go, go, goes positive when we are stretching the spring or negative when we are squeezing the spring. So that's what happens if the oscillations are completely free from all the external forces. So this is the Hooke's law that the force is proportional to displacement and it acts in the opposite direction. If positive displacement, force goes to the negative side. If displacement is negative, the force of the spring is going to the positive direction. So that's why we have this. At the same time, we have the Newton's law when all the forces are supposed to be equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is the second derivative of 
uh, distance, the first derivative being the speed, the second derivative is acceleration. So this is the Newton's law. So these two geniuses give us a differential equation mx second derivative of t is equal to minus kx of t. Now that's what we were considering in one of the previous lectures. This is a free oscillation. Now the free oscillation has uh, the equation, differential equation, has a solution. By the way, this is the end of the physics and start of the mathematics. <laughs> so the differential equation has a general solution. where omega 0 is equal to square root of k over m. So this is something which we discussed before. a and b can be any coefficients. And if you will substitute this x of t to this differential equation, you will have identity, which means it's a general solution. So a and b describe all the possibilities, um, all the real numbers, and that encompasses all the general solutions. We were also talking about that this is a linear uh, differential equation because it's all related to um, function uh, and, and its derivatives with some coefficients. So it's a linear differential equation. There is one more interesting concept. This is a homo genius. I think I spelled it correctly. It's a homogeneous equation and um, it means that if function x of t is a solution then function c times x of t where c any constant also is a solution. Now, without even looking at this general solution of this uh, differential equation, you see that if x is a solution, which means if this is identity for some function x of t, if instead of x of t you put c times x of t, where c is a constant, well, it will be multiplied by this, by c, and the derivative when you are multiplying function by a constant, it means the derivative also multiplied by constant, so it will be the same here the first derivative and the second derivative, will, it will be the same c, and c will cancel out, so we will still have the identity. So it's a homogeneous linear differential equation, uh, and this is the general solution. By the way, because of a second degree, which means it's a second derivative linear um, uh, differential equation, it depends on two variables. Now, these variables can be defined if you have initial conditions. Initial conditions can be, for instance, x of 0 and uh, first derivative of x of 0. So these two derivatives will define these two constants. That's it about whatever was before. Now, what happens now? Well, what happens now is that Our equation should be modified, taking into account our external force. So external force is here. So we are adding external force. So one force is the force of the spring, that's the Hooke's law, and another is external force, which is also applied. Now, in our case, in case of oscillation, we will talk about periodic um, external force. And not just periodic, we are talking about external force, which can be expressed as this. So it's basically the same as you're pushing the swing 
with certain periodicity and certain efforts which are probably a little bit bigger uh, when when you're really pushing and then it's smaller when you really uh, let the swing go then you don't really push so your force is well generally speaking can be described by something like this now obviously it's a model in real life everything is much more complex but for our purposes this is a model which we are discussing right now so this is the force and that's why the equation uh, will be mx of t I will take the uh, x of t here and equals to f0 times cosine omega t now what's very important is remember that general solution to homogeneous equation when it was equal to zero well there is no force was um, x of t is equal to a cosine omega zero t plus b sine omega zero t where omega zero is square root of k over m now what's important in this particular case is the omega this a frequency which uh, which we are using when we are pushing the swings this is the frequency of the function itself now I assume that omega is not equal to omega zero now why well this is actually a subject of the second lecture when they are equal so right now we are not considering this primarily because you understand that if you're pushing with the same frequency and if we are talking about an ideal situation about a model then you're swinging uh, to a greater and greater degree and basically the whole system might, uh, might, might actually destroy itself because you will increase the, uh, the intensity of the oscillation well obviously we are assuming that there is no friction there is no viscosity of the uh, surrounding uh, uh, environment and we are talking about the spring being basically of infinite lengths that it can stretch infinitely but if, if this is the case, which is absolutely not the case in real life, our spring will um, stretch more and more and more if we are pushing with the same frequency as the, uh, the inherent natural frequency of the spring actually is. So, this is the case when we are talking about right now in this particular lecture. Next lecture will be when they are equal, and that's a completely different story. Okay, so we've got the uh, differential equation. It's non-homogeneous because if I will multiply a uh, function by a constant c, obviously this left part will be multiplied by c, but the right part will not. So it's no longer a solution. So it's, it's, not, it's a non-homogeneous equation. But what's interesting is, let's consider you have two equations, two, two, two solutions to this particular um, equation x1 is a solution and x2 is a solution well let's consider function x3 which is difference between them well if you will substitute x1 will be identity and if you will substitute x2 will be identity and if you will subtract one identity from another you will get 1x1 of t minus x2 of t second derivative plus k x1 of t minus x2 of t equals to zero right because this is we are subtracting one equation where x1 here and it's a solution so it's identity and another equation x2 here and we subtract one equation from another the right part will, will cancel out and we will have what here so, which is mx3 of t is equal to, sorry, plus kx3 of t equals to zero. Which means what? That x3 is a solution 
to a homogeneous, to a corresponding homogeneous equation, differential equation. So two partial solutions. Partial means just one particular solution. There are many, obviously. But if you will take two uh, partial solutions and subtract them, then you will get a solution to a homogeneous equation. What does it mean? It means that if we know the general solution, we know all the solutions to a homogeneous equation, and by the way, we know over there, right? If we know, then it's sufficient to find only one solution uh, to non-homogeneous equation. And then if you will add this partial solution plus all the solutions to a general, you will have all solutions to uh, a non-homogeneous, you will get basically a general solution to non-homogeneous equation. Again, why? Because any other solution to a non-homogeneous equation can be obtained by adding our one particular which we have found and some general solution to a um, homogeneous equation. Now, if, if that is understood, and I if not, I don't know, send me a, an email and I will try to explain it later. Now, the, every lecture has notes in, uh, on, on the website, and I explained it in the notes as well. It's really very easy. So if you found one particular solution, then there is always some solution to a homogeneous equation which you can add to, to, to get any other uh, particular solution or partial solution, whatever the, whatever the name is. So all we have to do, since we know general solution to a uh, um, homogeneous equation when there is no external force, we just have to find one and only one solution um, which is a solution to a non-homogeneous uh, equation. If we will find this one, then adding a general solution to homogeneous equation, we will get general solution to non-homogeneous. Okay, so how can we find one particular solution to this, to, 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 to this equation? Well, that's easy. I mean, you just have to guess. Look, this is a cosine. Now, if this is a cosine, the second derivative of cosine is also a cosine with some coefficients. So we probably have to look for uh, the function which partial solution, which looks like some kind of a constant times cosine of omega t. If you will look in this particular format, all we have to do is to find constant c to basically uh, satisfy this particular equation. Well, fine, let's do it. The first derivative partial solution is equal to c um, from cosine is minus sine, so it's minus c, and then it will be inner function omega and sine of omega t. Okay, that's my first derivative. Constant. Um, derivative of cosine is a sine, and then there is an inner function, which is omega times t, and omega should be multiplied. Second derivative is a derivative of the first, so we have minus c omega cosine of omega t, and another omega, so it's square. Substitute into this equation. So what we will have, we will have this times m, uh, this times k, and equal to this, and the cosine obviously cancels out. So we have an equation for c, which is what? m times this, so it's minus m c omega square times cosine, which will cancel out, plus k c is equal to f0 and cosine again. Cosine cancels out. From which c is equal to f0 divided by k minus m omega square equals k, sorry, f0 
m k over m minus omega square. Now you remember what k over m is? It's omega zero square. Omega zero square minus omega square. Where omega zero is inherent natural um, angular frequency of the oscillation of the spring when there is no external force. Now you see why I have this assumption, because otherwise I will get zero in the denominator and the whole solution would be basically none. So we have found one particular uh, solution. So it's F divided by M omega zero square minus omega square times cosine omega t. This is a partial solution to my non-homogeneous equation. So if I will add this to a general solution where A and B can be anything, I will get a general solution to this uh, non-homogeneous um, equation. So we have solved the equation. The only thing is I would like to slightly modify how it looks. And I did it already before in one of the lectures. It's just a simple trick. See, I don't like cosine and sine. I would like to have only one function, trigonometric function. So how do we do it? A cosine uh, omega zero t plus b sine omega zero t equals two. A square plus b square times a divided by square root of a square plus b square cosine omega zero t uh, plus b divided by square root of a square plus b square sine omega zero t. Okay, so basically I divide it and, and uh, multiply it by square root of a square plus b square. Now, let's consider you have a coordinate um, plane. So let's take a and b. This is angle phi. Well, obviously a is a cosine in this particular a divided by square root a divided by square root of hypotenuse basically in this triangle would be a cosine of this angle and b which is this that would be a sine and doesn't really matter whether a or b are positive or negative it would be exactly the same thing if for instance a is negative then this angle is my phi. It's basically a definition of cosine and sine as functions, right? Okay, the only thing here is they're usually defined on a unit uh, circle, but not right now we're just stretching it to a radius of square root of a square plus b square. Okay, so if that's true, I'm taking this angle f uh, angle phi, sorry, and uh, so this would be my d, d is equal to square root of a square plus b square, a over this square root would be a cosine phi, cosine omega zero t plus, and this would be a sine, sine of phi times sine of omega zero t, which is equal to Hope you remember the trigonometry. This is a cosine of difference between these angles. Doesn't really matter 
phi minus uh, omega zero t or omega zero t minus phi because cosine is uh, an even function so I will put it in this now this is easier so instead of constants a and b I'm using different constants d and phi which basically define the same thing it defines for any particular a and b there is a particular d and phi and for any particular d and phi there is a concrete a and b so it doesn't really matter so if a and b are spanning the whole uh, real numbers d and phi are spanning the whole uh, positive numbers for d and uh, uh, and angles from 0 to 2 pi um, for angle phi so we still have this as a general solution to a homogeneous equation so the total solution would be for a non-homogeneous equation my total solution would be this which is a partial solution for non-homogeneous and this which is a general solution with different d and phi for homogeneous equation so let me just write it again so it's f divided by m omega 0 minus omega square times cosine omega t plus d times cosine omega 0 t minus phi so this is a general solution to a homo non-homogeneous equation, this one. All right? So what's interesting is that this is periodic function, right? Cosine is periodic uh, regardless of what, what's in there. So there is some kind of a period, all right? Um, now, um, how does it look? Well, first of all, to find out how it looks, we have to find d and phi. So let's just think about d and phi are defined by initial conditions. Now, reasonable initial condition is zero when the spring is not stretched in the very beginning at moment t equal to zero, spring is in a neutral position. Then we apply the force. Now we apply the force, just the force, we don't push anything. So the initial speed would be zero. So the force starts and the initial speed, acceleration will be obviously not zero, but the, the initial speed would, would, be, um, uh, would be zero. So it's not moving. The, in the very beginning, the object at the end of the spring is at the neutral position and not moving. And then we apply the force. So what happens? How can we define d and... Well, first of all, if this is x of t, we have to find the derivative as well, right? So derivative is equal to what? Well, this coefficient, f divided by m omega square times derivative of cosine, it's a minus sine of omega t times uh, well this is f0 yes f0 times um, inner function which is omega times omega plus well actually minus again because it's sine d sine of omega 0 t minus phi and times of in inner function times omega zero. All right? Okay. Now, what we are saying is that this is equal to zero at t equal to zero, and this is equal to zero at t is equal to zero. Well, this is easier, because if t is equal to zero, this thing is zero, right? Because sine of, uh, is zero. Now, and this is zero right now um, 
d is not so we have sine of uh, t is equal to zero this disappears so it's minus phi must be equal to zero right d is not equal to zero d is square root of a square plus b square remember and we're not talking about trivial solution x of t is equal to zero always this is not an interesting there is no oscillation obviously it's a solution by the way it's a solution to uh, a homogeneous equation but it's not interesting so if this if this is the case phi is equal to zero right well it can be pi as well but it doesn't really matter okay so we found uh, phi so phi is zero so there is no phi here that's easier and if you will substitute zero to here so phi is zero this is zero cosine of zero is one so we'll have just d on the right so d is equal to um, so if the whole thing is equal to zero then d is equal to minus this minus f zero divided by m omega square zero minus omega square cosine uh, of zero is one so that's basically d and this is phi and this is d so these are two concrete Various in case we have these initial conditions. I mean, if we have different conditions, initial conditions, it will be different values for d and phi. Uh, for instance, if we will stretch it a little bit and even give it a push in the beginning, well, that would be different, obviously, uh, solutions for d and phi. This is just an easier case and more natural. It's not, uh, it's not stretched or, or squeezed the spring and we don't really push it in any direction in the very beginning. All right. So this is the solution. Now how does it look? Well, to, to know how it looks we have to just assign certain values to f0, to mass, to, uh, to elasticity of the spring, so we know omega 0, and the um, angular um, angular speed of our external force how frequently we are pushing the whole string well I have basically done that in the notes for this lecture so I assigned certain concrete values to these variables and just graph the result and graph is as, as you understand it's a composition of two different uh, sinusoidal type uh, graphs uh, with, with different frequencies you see this is different frequencies different very important so what happens if they are different well the graph you you can look at the exact graph uh, on, on unizor.com uh, in notes for this lecture but basically it looks something like this it looks chaotic but it's still a periodical function so it's something like this so it's two different uh, oscillations with different frequencies um, and that's what will be the result if these are rational numbers and there is some kind of a common denominator it's easy to find a common period right so if this is for instance p1 divided by q1 and this is an omega 0 is p2 divided by q2 then multiplication 2 pi times q1 times q2 would be a period of this function right because if you will multiply uh, t by, by, by this you will have exactly the same period as far as the periodicity is concerned the resulting angle will be 2 pi times something greater well if these are irrational numbers there might not be a period in this particular case but it's just I mean it's just pure mathematics and I don't think it's very inter interesting right now for, for, the, for the people who trying to study physics but in any case if they are rational it's definitely something like this 
it all depends on how big the period is. If it's irrational numbers, then um, we will have a little bit more chaotic type of things. It, it will not be um, any kind of periodicity in this particular case. But that's besides the point. Anyway, this is everything about um, external force with, with frequency acting differently, with, with different frequency than the inherent natural uh, frequency of oscillation um, of the spring itself without external forces. All right, so I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. It's on unisor.com, so you go to Physics 14 scores. Um, it's the waves chapter, and uh, inside the waves, it's mechanical oscillations. Uh, there you will have the force, uh, forced oscillations lecture. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>